Hello, Booktube. I have another poem to read to you today. There's the bean, you know, so you've got the full package. You've got the, the molten sexiness that is me. You've got my adorable dog. Can we get the camera any closer? Huh? There's my baby. There's my baby. Oh, it's your baby. Oh, it's your baby. <laughs> <laughs> we came across a couple walking a dog this morning, and the dog was all bouncy to say hello, and Frida just stood there saying, what the hell's the matter with you? And uh, the... They were laughing their heads off, and I started to apologize. I said, sorry, she doesn't play. <laughs> she just doesn't. She's not aggressive, but she just doesn't play with other dogs. She thinks they're kind of losers for wanting to. And the girl's eyes lit up. And she said, oh, my God, my mother has two miniatures now. So they're the exact same way. They look at dogs the same way your dog is looking at mine. <laughs> That's hilarious. But not only do we have the molten sexiness and the bean, we've also got this anthology, which is called The New Poetry, but it came out in 1930. So it's, it's got a lot of old poetry in it now, including lots and lots of figures who are gone. You won't encounter them in, a norm, in, a, in an anthology today. And I've been having a ball exploring some of those. We didn't do that yesterday. Yesterday we did Edna St. Vincent Millay, which I think, I think she's safe from the ravages of time and forgetfulness. I think she'll be okay. But today we're going to do Eunice Teachins. Uh, T-I-E-T-J-E-N-S. Eunice Teachins. Uh, was a fascinating figure, a great teacher of writers, a great finder of writers, a great editor of writers, and married to a man who did some famous music, uh, who wrote some famous music, a couple of pieces of music you probably know. Uh, they had a wonderful, uh, her first husband, and she had a wonderful life together. And her story is very much worth telling. There's never been a collected poetry. There's never been a biography. It's the same old shtick. But I want to read you one of her poems today, and I'm, I'm going to resist the urge to psychoanalyze myself. <laughs> this is called My Mother's House. It's strange, my mother said, to think of the old house where we were born. I can remember every chink and every board our feet had worn. It's gone now, many years ago. They tore it down. It was too old, and none too grand as houses go, not like a new house bought or sold. And so they tore it down, but we could talk about it still and say, just so the kitchen used to be, and the stairs turned in such a way. But we're gone too now. Everyone who knew the house is dead and buried, and I'll be last so long alone with all my children grown and married. There's not a living soul can tell except myself just how the grass grew round the pathway to the well or where the china cupboard was. Yet while I live, you cannot say that old house is quite, quite dead. It still exists in some dim way while I remember it, she said. That is, again, a wonderful moment and also captures a wonderful truth, a truth that some of you who are very young won't know. And those of us who are 28 will know, which is that sometimes that reality in that poem is absolutely, literally true, where the only place that a thing that used to live exists is in your own head, a place that used to live and is now gone completely without a trace. Without a trace, in my own case, a ramshackle apartment building that is now the gone and buried underneath a five-story parking garage. So it's, it's not just that the rooms have been rearranged, but you can still look at the building. It's not just that the building is still there, but everything's been changed. It's that there's no trace of it whatsoever. And there are a couple of places in my memory where literally I am the only one left who remembers them. And no one else. There's fascination in that. There's also fascination in that when it comes to people. But places especially, because places were living things. They were, they were receptacles of all sorts of memories. And that's a lovely, lovely poem to evoke that. Uh, and I'm, again, I'm going to try to resist the urge to psychoanalyze. <laughs> there is construction going on here at Hyde Cottage. I am trying to keep it under control. I'm trying to keep it to a minimum. I'm trying to keep it livable and bearable. But things are being changed some of which had character, and some of that character was a century old. And there'll be no trace of that character when the construction is over. I will be the last person to have ever seen it. I'll be the last person to have ever lived with some of those little physical details. They will be gone, beyond recall. They won't be shifted to another room. They will be gone. Uh, and th so this poem does two things that I love when poems do. One is to catch a perfect moment. The moment here is the discussion with this old woman. Uh, and, and the second is to capture an evanescent phenomenon, something that is real but that we don't w have words for. And that is one of them. What happens when a thing 
when time and circumstance have taken chisels and hammers to, some, to the world to such an extent that those details exist only in your memory. Uh, I love that. I absolutely love that that was true. This book has a few Eunice Teachings poems in it. They're all wonderful. Uh, maybe we'll read another one tomorrow. But I, instead, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up for now. I never want these poetry videos to go on for long. I just want to give you a little bit of poetry in your day. That's all. Uh, so that that was... It, it hits extra home this weekend. Because unavoidably, I am watching century-old architectural details get wiped out. That's, it's just unavoidable. For the kind of work that's being done, it's unavoidable. And I just know, I don't know for sure, but I'm predicting that at some point, some interior wall or board or woodwork is going to be uncovered that has somebody's name stenciled in it from a century ago. I can feel that that's going to happen. And this poem is going to bring that alive. This poem is going to come completely alive for that moment. I don't think I've ever read a poem that does this moment quite so well. So, so I had a personal impulse to, to share that one with you today. But that's all. That's all the poetry for the day. We'll come back to a poem tomorrow. Uh, so I will see you then. Thank you, book team.